Oops, somebody's not muted. There we go. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Salem Lutheran Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. And I am very pleased and blessed to be able to join you from our sanctuary. Ooh, ah, it is indeed beautiful. And a big thank you to Laura Vondelindy and family for helping get the sanctuary prepared for Christmas, even if we can't join together in this space. It, there's still something powerful about going through um, our rituals and traditions and preparing for the arrival of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we are blessed for a couple of reasons. Um, one, because we continue to be led by our wonderful musicians, Janine and Mark. A big thank you to both of you. To thank you to all of you for continuing to do the um, Zoom thing and join together uh, through screens to be the body of Christ as one. We are also blessed because today we are commemorating the 50th anniversary of American Lutheran Churches ordaining women. And this is a tradition that the ELCA has, uh, or a, a a justice issue that the ELCA has maintained and has slowly but surely grown in mainline churches. But for us Lutherans, it is 50 years that we have been ordaining women. It is something. Um, and at the same time, we are celebrating 40 years that we have been ordaining women of color. It was not a rule against it, but this that, was, that commemorates the first um, ordination of a woman of color. And we are commemorating 10 years where we actually are ordaining all women because 10 years ago is when the ELCA um, voted to ordain all uh, LGBTQIA individuals who are not just in the closet, but who are out and in partnered relationships as well. So we have the 50th anniversary that we're celebrating, the 40th anniversary that we're celebrating, and the 10 year anniversary that we're celebrating all in this one year. So we'll have some time to give thanks for that. We'll have some special blessings and it'll shape our service um, in song and in prayer as well. A big thank you to Pastor Jan Bornhoff from Salem here um, to help lead portions of this service. Um, it's such a gift to have a daughter of Salem who is ordained in ministry, who continues to be present and lead and serve in the ways that Jan does. So thank you, Jan. Um, a big thank you to everyone who has provided gift cards and their volunteer time for our Christmas bag giveaway this coming Saturday. Um, we are really blessed that we are going to be able to put two gift cards in every gift bag that we are providing, two $25 gift card. 
guards. But in order to do that, we are about a about 10 short of that number. So if we could get just a couple more by Wednesday, that would be fantastic. If you've already provided some, don't worry because there's a few people who have spoken to me that they wanna contribute. And I think that will round us out nicely. Um, if you have said you'd like to volunteer from the people I've heard from, I've sent you an email. If you haven't gotten an email or you didn't tell me you wanna volunteer, get a hold of me and I'll give you the details for both assembling the bags on Friday and distributing them on Saturday. Saturday is gonna be extra special because there's a burgeoning nonprofit called the Camden Collective that's doing um, youth education through some learning pod uh, after school type things during the pandemic here. They are also doing a winter clothing and coat drive and they're gonna do that distribution on Saturday in the parking lot at the same time that we're doing this bag. So it's gonna be quite the to do in serving the community this Saturday together. Final announcement is we are, we were so blessed this past week with the Adventacular choir pieces. And so tomorrow choir is going to gather again for a brief overview and, um, and time of fellowship as well to rehearse and review the, the Christmas choir pieces. So if you can join us tomorrow, get an, you'll expect an email from Janine today sometime. But if you are not in choir, but would like to sing together, um, let us know and we, will, we would love to have you join in um, worshiping and praising God through song this Christmas. Did I get that right, Janine? Okay, good, fantastic. So today's worship will um, kick off once again with our lighting of the Advent wreath. And though I am in the sanctuary, we are not doing it live. It is again, a pre-recorded portion. Oh God, we light the third candle of Advent. John, the one you sent to point us to your light. May it bring us joy and light our path for the journey to come. O oh God, we light the third candle. Now let us join together in praying our prayer of the day for this prayer, as well as pretty much all of worship. When you see bolded lettering on your screen, please join in together in that language. God of everything, in the midst of crisis and uncertainty, we give you thanks for the ways you continue to show up in the world and in our lives. Help us to show up and care for each other, whether by prayer, physical distancing, or helping as we are able. Grant us hope for the days ahead. Amen. Now let's join together in singing our gathering song, Come Now, O Prince of Peace. Oh. 
Now I invite um, Pastor Jan to unmute yourself. And Pastor Jan and I will lead our uh, we will lead all of you in this time for a litany of thanksgiving, where we will give thanks for the witness and leadership of women in our capital C church, our Lutheran church, and at Salem specifically. So Pastor Jan and I will alternate leading the petitions. And when you see um, at the end of each petition, please reply with, we rejoice and give thanks to God. It'll be on the screen at the end of each petition. If you can't hear, wait for the pause and then join in. Or if you can't see, wait for the pause and join in at that time. Who's starting, you or me? I was just going to say, <laughs> Pastor Jan, I'll have you begin. And each okay. petition that uh, you begin also is labeled PJ. You may begin. For the vocations of pastor, deacon, and bishop, for those who lead churches and faith communities, for those whose life work is evangelical, witness in word and deed. We, we rejoice, rejoice and, give and give thanks to God. God. For 50 years of women's ordination in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and its predecessor bodies, we give thanks, we rejoice and give thanks to God. For the women of color who have been called by God to serve this church, we rejoice and give thanks to God. God. For the faithful service of LGBTQIA plus pastors who have enriched this church and for, the, and for the 10 years since the policy change, enabling them to serve publicly out and in partnered relationships. We rejoice, we rejoice and, and give, give thanks, thanks to God. God. For the work of seminary professors and staff, chaplains and administrators, those who work for nonprofits and those who are retired from paid ministries. We, we rejoice, rejoice and give, give thanks, thanks to God. God. For those who are discerning a call to serve Christ's church, for those who are in candidacy and for those in their internship congregations, we rejoice, rejoice and, give, and give, give thanks to God. For the witness of Mary Magdalene, the dance of Miriam, the hospitality of Lydia, the prayer of Mary, the discernment of Deborah, the courage of Rahab, and the faithfulness of our biblical foremothers. We rejoice and give thanks to God. For the witness of women in the ELCA, including presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton and Minneapolis area Synod Bishop Anne Svenningsen, as well as for the Daughters of Salem who were called into rostered ministry, including Pastor Lisa Schaefer Richardson, Pastor Janice Anderson Bornhoft, and Deacon Michelle Collins, and also for Salem's called leaders, Reverend Susan Masters, Reverend Dr. Robin Provis, the late Reverend Judy Burgett Winzig, 
Patricia, Reverend Patricia Wickland and Reverend Catherine Raddick. And then for Salem's interns, Bonnie Lohman, Deborah Hutterer, Becky Warner, Dana Nelson, and Sarah Nye. We rejoice and, and give thanks, thanks to God. God. Gracious and living God, we rejoice and give thanks for your power on display throughout time and place, calling all kinds of people to be witnesses to your grace and power. We celebrate how the Spirit has blessed your church through the work of women and girls, including in this time and place. Guide us as your people into welcoming your prophets and teachers among us and hearing Christ's good news through them. With gratitude, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor Jan, for helping lead that section. And goodness gracious, it had to go on three slides, the number of um, daughters of Salem who have been called to rostered ministry um, or uh, women and femmes that Salem has called to be pastors and the number of interns that Salem has had who are women. Um, the Lutheran Church has a long ways to go for how it calls and empowers um, women as leaders, but I am very grateful that Salem has done a lot and continues to grow in its um, empowering of women, not just into leadership, but into ordained ministry and into the, the work of word and sacrament. May it continue. Now, we will move into our word portion of the service with our first reading. From Isaiah chapter 61. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me, Isaiah writes, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory, they shall build up the ancient ruins and they shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as the bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now let's join together in our gospel acclamation.
I tell you, I think every week that gospel acclamation gets more and more beautiful. I'm not sure how that's possible because it's the same recording, but goodness gracious, thank you to Mark and Janine for that offering. Our gospel reading for today comes from John's gospel. We have a little bit from the beginning of the first chapter and then a little bit towards the end because in between, John is um, going off about light and about the word. But, or, or, but in this part portion, we have the introduction to John the Baptist and we have his witness and testimony. So the Holy Gospel according to John chapter one. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, well, who are you? But he confessed and did not deny it but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And then they asked him, well, what then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet then? And he answered, no. When they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? But John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. Now I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. Beloved siblings of God, grace to you in peace from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This sermon is all about witness. It is all about not getting the glory for yourself, but being very clear in your message who you are witnessing to or about is essential in witness. You may think it's a little bit weird that on a Sunday when we are commemorating and celebrating the leadership of women in this church, we have a text that centers a guy. But if you know your Bible very much, while we listed um, many wonderful women who have been called into ministry through scripture or in scripture, the Bible tends to highlight the story of men because it was mostly written by men. But if we think about witness, in the church, in the history of God's people, at Salem, in my life, and in yours, I think people have pointed to God regardless of their gender, be they man or woman or, cis or, or transgender. Witnessing to God is not about that personal identity. It's about how you are showing God's love and presence in the world. And this is the epitome of what John the Baptist is doing. He does it loud. He does it big. He does it messy and rough. He does it boldly. But always pointing to our Savior, Jesus Christ, whose birth we will be celebrating in mere weeks, whose life we continue to model our own lives as a community of faith after, and whose death and resurrection sets us free 
from death and sin itself. Now, anytime there's a scripture passage about John the Baptist and I get to be on a computer, you better believe that I am going to pull up one of my favorite art pieces called the Eisenheim Altarpiece. I will try to describe it very briefly for those people who um, cannot see it on their screens in front of them. But I also am going to be zooming in, so if you can't see it very clearly right now, don't worry. The Eisenheim altarpiece is primarily a triptych, where there's one center panel and then two side panels, and we're not going to go into those side panels or the under panel either. But this altarpiece sat on an altar in Germany for many years and now is in a museum in France. And the central figure of this altarpiece is our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. And on one side, there are women, Mary, mother of Jesus and Mary Magdalene, weeping and grieving the loss of their beloved Jesus Christ. They were, depending on the account of the crucifixion, at Jesus' side when this happened. But John the Baptist, it was not. John the Baptist was nowhere to be found. In fact, he was dead. And yet, in this art, John the Baptist is not just by Jesus' side, but his long pointer finger is extended towards the crucified Savior. And even more. You might think that it kind of looks like John the Baptist is flexing his bicep here. But the finger that is being extended is an image that I pray will forever be ingrained in your mind. That image is of witness. Because what it means to be witness is to point to Christ. The words that were right next to John's image say, I must decrease and the Lord must increase. When you witness, you do not make it about yourself but you make it about the Lord about whom you are witnessing. The Lord who is with everybody and you're telling them that story. The Lord who is saving everybody and you're telling them that story. The Lord who has died and you're telling them that story and the Lord who has risen and conquered death once and for all who and you're telling them that story. The Lord who is about to be born into this world and you're telling them that story. One of the most powerful witnesses in my life is my or was my great grandmother and we called her Gigi. I forget when I mention her in sermons because it comes so often and naturally. So pardon me if I've told you about Gigi already. And if not, oh, you're lucky now. Because Gigi was a saint. Gigi was, um, she got to be into her late 90s before she passed. She was the only great grandmother that I knew. And she loved her family so, so much. And when she showed up into a room, that love just filled the space. In fact, when I think about Christmases with my family over the years, and I think of all the loved ones that I've been blessed to spend Christmas with and that I sadly will not be this year, it's Gigi's face who comes first to my mind. It's Gigi's face who, now that I've gotten to know her through her writings and through conversations with my family members, who has always been a person of faith, somebody who has been the lead prayer at our family gatherings, the one who always included God bless you in cards, the one who, when they said I was going to pray for you, you believed her. And she did it. Every day. 
The one who, the one who talked to my family about me becoming a pastor when I was just a child and never told me about it. But she was witnessing to something and she told people about what God was up to in this world and in my life too. But yet she never made it about herself. Now don't get me wrong, Gigi was not shy. She did not shrink in when presented with an opportunity to express herself or be herself. But it was never about herself. It was about those whom she loved. It was about her family, and most importantly, it was about her God. And so when I think of this John, this John image with his long, bony finger pointed at his Savior, I think on the other side, it might be my Gigi with her long, bony, kind of wrinkly finger pointed at her Savior just the same. Who has been a witness to you? Has it been one of the many incredible women leaders at Salem? Has it been somebody in your family? Who has looked at you and pointed to Christ? Who has reminded you that you are not alone? Who has reminded you that a new creation is coming, one marked by peace and justice and love and equity and affirming of all genders and sexual orientations and races? And then, beloved, how have you been a witness? How have you pointed your fingers? Have you pointed your fingers at Christ? Or have you pointed your fingers at money, at power, at popularity? Or at yourself, of course. In this season of Advent, while we wait, while we prepare, while we remember, and while we anticipate, every step of the journey must be filled with witness. We must be witnessed to in order to take each step because this journey is tough. We need to be reminded that God is with us, that Christ is coming onto the scene to make all things new. And as community, we need to do some witnessing our, ourselves. We need to use our voices, our whole bodies, and of course, our pointer finger to point to the risen Lord, point to baby Jesus, to point to the ongoing work of the Spirit in our community, today, tomorrow, and forever just like Gigi. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. Now we will reflect God's word back with some praise and a wonderful Advent song through our hymn of the day.
Amen. Now we will spend some time in prayer together. Each petition will conclude with Lord in your mercy, please reply with hear our prayer. And the final petition will include prayers for healing. If you have access to the chat, now is a good time to add any additional prayers of healing, especially people or places for whom you'd like me and our Salem community to be praying today and beyond. And I apologize in advance if we don't get every single prayer, but I will do my best when that time comes. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the witness of women in your life, throughout scripture, in the history of this church and at Salem. We lament and we ask for forgiveness that we have not always embraced and followed the word and leadership of women. Help us to do better. We give you thanks for the women who yet continued to persevere and make a way and have, were determined to pursue their vocations in you. We give you thanks for Jan. We give you thanks for all of the pastors that have been women and femmes from Salem. And we ask, Lord, that there are many to come, that Salem might continue to lift up the leadership of women in general and into word and sacrament. May we all grow and may we all follow the witness of your people, of your women. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, we give you thanks for the ways that you are making this world new. We give you thanks for your open ear to the ways that we groan in pain and in sorrow and in sickness. We know that you hear us and are with us. And we ask, Lord, that you bring justice, that you bring healing, that you bring hope, and you bring an end to violence, an end to injustice. And we pray, Lord, that you do it quickly. We pray, Lord, that you do it for all people, for the land itself. And we pray, Lord, that you use us in this work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we give you thanks for all the ways that you do bring healing into every corner of creation. We ask, Lord, that you be with our Salem community as we suffer under this pandemic. There are so many people who will feel isolated, whose mental illness has been worse than, or mental state has been worse than ever. And people who have COVID, who have lost loved ones due to COVID. We pray for recovery and healing for all of us in need. We pray for Salem's homebound individuals. We pray for Mark. We pray for Edris from Honduras, held in custody pending possible deportation. We pray for all of those loved ones and places we hold dear in our hearts that we write in the chat, we speak aloud at this time, or we share with you and your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your justice, in your mercy, and your grace. Amen. Now I invite you to please unmute yourself.
and people of Salem and extended community, the peace of Christ be with you always. Also Let us share a sign of God's peace together right now as I get breakout rooms situated. And then we'll spend about two to three minutes in breakout rooms. <laughs> peace to you. Peace, peace to everyone. Peace. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Doing the Zoom wave here, you know. Mm-hmm. Peace be with you, Eileen. Let's see, can you unmute yourself for a bit? It didn't quite work, but I saw you almost do it. Well, hi. Hi, Kirsten, peace be with you. I wanna with say peace you. to Eileen. Were you out with the dog? She's out right now and I'm just watching her, but it's also really cold out. So I had to put my coat on. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, peace be with you. Peace be with the pets. Peace be with you, Eileen. And with Maria. Yeah. God bless you. And peace to anyone who's watching this later. Peace be with you. Thanks for joining us later as well. Eileen, the sanctuary looks pretty good, doesn't it? Good. <laughs> okay, let's start to close these other rooms here. <clears throat> Welcome back, Barb and Sharon and Don. You are back in the main room. Okay, yay. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Now we will continue worship with our time of the meal. Merciful God, we do not presume to come to your table trusting in our own righteousness but in your abundant mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat and drink the body and blood of your dear son, Jesus Christ, that we may live in him and he in us now and forever. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it and gave thanks and gave it to his people saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, let us pray our Lord's Prayer together in whatever version you are most comfortable or with the words on your screen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now we will share the elements with each other, spreading these words or hearing them for yourself. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. As you distribute the elements and have a brief moment, we'll enjoy some um, meditative music as well. God of abundance with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now I invite Pastor Jan to unmute herself once again and share a blessing with us. May the joy of God's freedom cause your spirit to dance. May the presence of God's peace bring wholeness to your body and mind. May God give you blessing and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, mother of us all. Amen. Amen. Now let us join together in singing a familiar tune with slightly different lyrics. So this song will be to the tune of Be Thou My Vision, but it is different lyrics. So if you can see the screen, please join in accordingly. God of the weary, who answered your call, trusting your promises, giving their all. Women like Sarah and Hannah and Ruth give us their courage to live in your truth. God of women who walked Jesus way giving their resources learning to pray 
out of stories forgotten, oppressed. Quietly asking who smiled at my birth. In Jesus dying, you show us our worth. Amen. Now may you go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. We'll have, we'll have a brief time of postlude, and anyone still in the postlude afterward will be put in some breakout rooms for some small group fellowship time, however long you want. Mm -hmm.